Hey guys, I'm here with Yvette Monreal, and you might know her from Stargirl on CW. And I'm so excited because, child, episode seven, let's talk about <laughs> episode seven. Now, Yolanda has been struggling, not just mentally, but also spiritually as well, because she took a life. How was it for you, Yvette, playing through Yolanda's journey from the first season to now? I mean, it's definitely being more elaborated. Um, season one, it was a really big deal for her to have to take a life. It goes against everything she believes in, against her faith. It's uh, the biggest sin that she's ever committed and nobody can relate to her. So that's definitely taking a toll on her. Um, season two, it is explored more and um, she leans more on her faith, which is something that you don't see often in shows. So I can really appreciate that being Catholic myself. Um, but yeah, so her journey and her religion and just finding who she is, like who, what she believes, her morality and, and uh, just figuring things out, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's something that she has to go through to, you know, come to terms on her own. So summer school chapter seven, okay, Anna makes a huge decision. Now, after watching the episode myself, the first question I truly have is that Brainwave has embedded himself within Yolanda. Now, if that's true and he takes control, do you believe Yolanda will be strong enough to fight him out? So I feel like, honestly, this is really taking a toll on Yolanda and um, confronting, just knowing that, I don't know, see, confronting Brainwave, that's like her biggest fear, you know, in the first episode, the first episode that you see Yolanda this season, when she goes to her pastor, she thinks Brainwave is in the the um, the confession, the confession booth, and uh, it's her biggest fear. So I think that I think that it's definitely hard on her. I don't I don't know if she's strong enough to do it again. It's def like taking his life was something that she really struggled with. So. Um, I'm sure if she had to, she would do what she had to do, but, um, it's, it's really, it's really taking a toll on her right now. So Yolanda has been dealing with a lot of guilt and heavy burden that's been affecting her views mm -hmm. on how she grew up Catholic, especially because of her guilt over Henry's death. And one of my questions was, do you think that it might be a little misplaced in her feeling guilty over Henry's death? Because as a viewer, when I was watching it, I thought it was more of just two people, one who needs to learn to forgive the person who did her wrong and another person who wanted to be that person that this person always thought he could be. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, I really like that. That's a different perspective that I really, really didn't think about. But I mean, for, for Yolanda's own sake, I mean, just like with how much we have dived into her religion and, um, you know, I think it's taking a toll on her, on her morally. Uh, this, this is something that she doesn't really know how to deal with. It's something that nobody really understands. So uh, I do honor the fact that like, okay, this is, this has happened to her. It's something big. It's something that no one knows how to justify or validate. So, um, you know, I think she, she, she does have guilt and she, she is battling internal internally with herself and, you know, she does think that it's like God's punishment for the sins that she's committed. And like, so yeah, I see, I see both. I see both ways though. I, I really like that perspective that you just gave. That's something that I didn't really think about. This one of my, I, I loved Henry and Yolanda. I, I thought like he, there's so much like redemption I wanted for him. And that's like, oh, for it sure. Short, it was cut short, really hurt me. But he, it hurt everyone. Everyone really was did. so everyone was like, hey, we were team Henry. He was he was on the right path. He was helping you guys out. And I'm like, man, we're all thinking the same thing. But it was something like no one expected to fall in love with him so much. You know, we all fell in love with him. Even our showrunner was like, there's a way to bring him back. I don't know. I might think about it. I usually don't do that. But, you know, like he he really like just captured all of our hearts. And he was so fun to work with and I mean he did come back in this episode okay I can say that he was, it was so fun to work with when he came back again it was um 
It was really fun. And I have so many photos. I can't wait for this episode to air so I can post them all. The BTS. We did a little dancing in the hallways. It was great. I'm excited. I can't wait to see the behind the scenes part because I did see the episode. So I'm yeah. happy to see the more of the more lighthearted side because this episode was heavy in a so, good way because we need to see more of Yolanda and her own journey. So that's what I'm excited about, but it still is heavy. It's so heavy. I know. Tell me about it. It was very emotionally draining, but I knew the payoff, the reward was going to be worth it. So, I mean, I really liked the the episode. It was based, I don't know if you knew this, but it was based um, the scene of the hallway and Henry and me seeing him from afar. Like that was all based off of a scene in Nightmare on Elm Street. Wow. Yeah. That's like the inspiration, the inspiration for it, I guess. So it wasn't based on it. Yeah, that was really cool, though. That entire scene was like you can at first you can tell if maybe she was dreaming or if it was actually happening. And I love exactly visually. That was amazing. That's exactly what they were going for. And um, it turned out really well. So it really did. And there's a question that your character asked, and it really hit me when she asked. She asked, why was she chosen as Wildcat? Mm -hmm. and I feel like I know why because I'm the viewer but for you why do you believe Yolanda was chosen to be Wildcat well I believe that I mean she's just such a fighter inside and Courtney was able to see that when nobody else was able to you know and um I think yeah I mean becoming Wildcat was something you saw when she had to make that hard decision, right? And uh, can we talk about that or no? Oh, definitely. Let's talk about it. Let's. Get okay, okay, it. okay. You saw, you saw when she had to make that hard decision and leave the JSA. I mean, that was a very heartbreaking scene. She, the wildcat was like this rebirth for her, and it, it gave her all this confidence when she had none. So, I mean, to actually leave the Justice Society of America, this newfound family, it's kind of like she had to do this for herself. Um, but yeah, I think she was chosen because she has a heart of gold, you know, just like, just how Green Lantern said, and she has a lot of potential and she hasn't reached her fullest potential yet. And Courtney saw that inside of her and, and yeah, she has it in her to be the greatest. She definitely does. But also I feel like her decision to leave the JSA, I almost feel like, even though it was for herself, it also makes, it's going to make her more vulnerable to Mm -hmm. brainwave in that sense because in a way she's she's isolating herself from she's isolating herself she's trying to get away from the situation she wants to run away for a little bit if she can but obviously like that never really works out um (laughs) tell me if there if it ever has but (laughs) yeah it's um it's it's very heartbreaking for her to leave the JSA and, and she is trying to just step away for her own sanity, for her own mental health. And, and I think for her, it's like, if she were to ever come back to the JSA, it would have to be on her own terms because this is just too much for her. And yes, Courtney came to her rescue at the end, but I think it was a little too late when that happened. Like she, she kind of, she went over, like she just, she just lost it, you know? So so I think she needs some time away. I can see that. One thing I wanted to also yeah. touch on is because really delving into her religion and how that obviously has affected her, because we saw in season one how even her family, except for her little brother, I would say, kind of turned their back when the mistake that she made in trusting the wrong person mm-hmm come out into the whole town basically and even in this episode like her mom instantly goes to a judging place instead of being there for her daughter yes definitely there's there's a lot of um wait are you talking about episode seven when her mom mom, yeah um, yeah the priest asked her to come and they try to talk for a second her mom it's like an instant on the attack in the sense yeah it's very yeah it's it's very um I guess it's nothing that she hasn't dealt with before with her mom but I think that the thing that changes her mom's opinion a little bit it's like the priest is like hey you need to be here for her you know she's been judged enough and everything so that kind of 
I had a little like, oh, wait, is my mom kind of on my it? But I mean, before I could even deal with that situation, we see brainwave and um, running out. But I definitely think it's something that's going to be a little more explored, hopefully. I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything. (laughs) Well, I'm definitely excited. Now, becoming a superhero, there is always risk involved. What is the biggest risk you've taken? Being a superhero, like with my own stunts or? No, you yourself. What is the biggest risk you've taken in your life? The biggest risk I've taken in my life, I would say, I mean, pursuing. I I feel like the first thing that comes to mind is just like pursuing my dream and acting. That was a really big risk because I had a lot of people telling me that I I wouldn't make it. and, And, you know, I come from a. I come from a family where like my dad was like, Hey, if you don't do this in one year, like he was putting timelines on me and stuff. So it was very like, it was very much a risk to me because, but then I, I I had a lot of inspiring people. I looked up to like one of, one of the things I remember is Jim Carrey saying like, Hey, he told the story about his dad, how his dad became, um, he started working somewhere where he didn't he didn't really enjoy working and he lost his job anyway and he said something about how like you can lose your job doing something you don't love to do so might as well fail if you will like trying right like just keep going till you make it so I would say that was a huge risk and and it's it's working out for me a little bit so I you know I'm glad I took it I mean a lot of it I mean let's you also did like faking it the Fosters Rambo I mean come on now I know. And I'm so like, seriously, I'm so happy that I've just gone on that journey and faking it was really special. It was it was my first mainstream job, like huge job. And, you know, I learned so much just being that character. And and um, I mean, working with Rita and Katie and Greg, they're they were so great. And I, I, I loved it all. And the Fosters, that's where I met Meg. I don't know if you knew that. But Meg, she plays Shiv on our show. And we crossed paths. We didn't become, we didn't like have as much time together as we would have probably liked to, but you know, it's, it just kind of comes full circle. It's fun to like realize that like, wow, people who are meant to be in your life, they're, they're going to be in there some, some way, somehow. And then Rambo, of course, that was so awesome to film. Um, We filmed in Spain. That was amazing. Bulgaria, Canary Islands. That was amazing. I learned so much from the legend himself and uh, just working with Adriana and, you know, Oscar, they were, they were just, it was just, I felt like, wow, this is, this is a great caliber to be on, you know? Um, But it was, it was, it was a lot of fun and they're great people. So. Well, I mean, speaking of fun, what does a training day look like for you? Because that last fight scene in episode six was huge. Okay, that was the longest episode that we shot. We actually were filming. We went on to film like other episodes, episode seven, episode eight. We kept having to come back to that episode because the fight sequence, it was so long. And there's a lot of preparation. Our stunt coordinator, coordinator, Walter Garcia, he actually... Um, directed that episode, which was great because he he knows his stuff. He knows how long it's going to take for each for each stunt scene to film and everything like that. So, so that was that was great. It's it's a lot of work though. We were on we were on set for rehearsals. We were on set to see our our stunt uh, doubles do their rehearsals so that we could you know mimic our landing and their landing and like okay she fell like that so. So it was a lot of work, but I mean, all the time we put in, it was worth it. Did you see that episode? It was amazing. So proud. Seriously, like it was awesome watching. Obviously, you had Star Girl versus Shiv. You had um, I don't know why I'm thinking of its name. <laughs> you had the, like I want to say them with two Artemis, Our yeah. Man, yeah, Dr. yeah. You Monet. had the, like like two like more of the I don't not say athletic, but athletic. <laughs> And then you had Wildcat versus Isaac. And I'm just, I think for me, like the, the motion of watching the violin play and how it comes out and where it lands was amazing visually to see. Because when you think, awesome. you think of music and it like surrounds you, but you never also think of it, how it could be weaponized in a sense. Yeah, that was an awesome little uh, thing they did there. I mean, 
they're visionaries. They're great. They, they know what they're doing. It's funny though, because it's funny that you mentioned that because we didn't know that that was going to happen. We see, we see, um, the, per we see Isaac just like flinging his violin and, you know, in person, it's like, we have to make in our mind, like, what's that going to look like? Ah, we didn't even know it was going to be like this sonic boom, which made it look 10 times cooler, but like, yeah, it's great. It's great. They have really good, um, they have really good visions for the story and for, you know, the CGI is just amazing. We have a great, great team. So very blessed, very blessed to be a part of it. And what I'm curious about the most after, I mean, we're still in season two, but two seasons of playing Yolanda and Wildcat, what have yeah. you learned about yourself? Oh, that's a new question. What have I learned about myself? Hmm. I feel like I've learned to, I've learned to just, um, I want to answer this genuinely and, and honestly, because I haven't been asked this before. Um, oh, the touch. <laughs> yeah. So um, I feel like I've just learned to appreciate the experiences that I've gone through and, you know, no one's perfect. And the experiences that you do go through, they make you who you are and they shape you for who you are. So I think I've really taken that in for my character. Um, and I've appreciated, I've appreciated that about myself, like the mistakes that I, the mistakes that I've gone through, um, they've really molded me as a person. And I think Yolanda's learning that too. And after, cause I know you said that when you first got into this, you had people telling you, you know, like you, you wouldn't make it or, you know, your dad gave mm -hmm. you that one year, but what would you tell your younger self if you could get the chance to? If I could tell my younger self like advice. Yes. Mm, I would say to, I mean, I would say to <laughs> uh, always work hard Um uh, the people that you meet will, you know, whether it being um, a production, a production designer, or, you know, the, the PA, whatever, like the tables will always turn. So always be nice to the people who you're working with, because it, it can always come full circle and it and the tables can always turn. So that's what I've learned too. like, always just everyone's human and always treat them like, treat the waiter like you would treat the executive, you know, because you never know what could happen. And people will always remember how they make you feel. So be kind. That's what I would say. <laughs> that is amazing advice. Yes. And what has been the best part for you for being a part of Stargirl, for being a part of the DC family? Honestly, I've learned so much from my co-stars, um, whether that be business or politically or, or you know, just I've I've just grown to have so much empathy for 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 everyone and I've just learned so much so I think the best thing is just like having the people that I do around me and surrounding myself around people who who are so inspiring and and just yeah having a good group of people like we have a long contract on the show so if we go all the way I'm so lucky to be surrounded by these people because they inspire me every day and and that's the only I mean that's the best thing I could ask for. We're all like a big family. So I think that's, that's the best thing about this job so far. And because we have a little bit more time, because we're close to Halloween, I was hoping you wouldn't mind joining me for a game of Halloween, this or that. Okay, sure. Let's do it. So scary movies or scary stories. Ooh, maybe scary stories because with scary stories, I can make up what I want to see. Whereas scary movies, <laughs> it can be a little traumatic. So uh, scary stories. Pumpkin spice or pumpkin pie? Ooh, pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. Hot chocolate or hot apple cider? Hot chocolate, for sure. Hayride or haunted house? Haunted house. No, hayride. <laughs> hayride. Let's do hayride. I love rides. Zombies or mummies? Ooh, zombies are scarier. Zombies. <laughs> and my last question, because we only have six episodes left. Is there anything you can tell fans to look forward to in the next upcoming episodes? Uh, sure. Oh, okay, okay. 
Hmm. Hmm. Well, this is hard to answer without spoiling it. So I'm trying to think of a fun way to say it. Look forward to. I want to say redemption, but I can't say that because I don't know if that's a spoiler. What do I? Let me see. Hmm. Look forward to. Look forward to. Sorry. Look forward to more fight scenes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to say that. Let me just say that because it's easier. Okay, guys, look forward to more fight scenes. It's going to be explosive. Thank you so much, Miss Yvette Monreal, for joining me. I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was so fun talking with you. I hope you have a good rest of your day.